Welcome to the LE TV LE One. You may remember not too long ago, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2 really shook up the smartphone market. It costed about $150 and for that you were getting a Helio X10 processor, so literally flagship performance at that budget price point and that was really really special. Costing about $180, which is about $30 more than the competition, the LE One is extremely well built. It feels very, very premium. It's got an almost bezel-less design. It's got a beautiful, clean, cold-to-the-touch metal trim. And the actual physical buttons and the capacitive buttons are both excellent. They feel more solid than any I've ever used on any device. And the capacitive ones light up in a really nice, uniform manner. The only thing that stops it being perfect is the glossy plastic on the back, a matte finish would have been much, much preferred, but it's not a disaster. There's very little to complain about when it comes to the display. It's not quite the brightest I've used, but it's vibrant and punchy, and 5.5 inches and 1080p makes it a sharp and immersive experience. Unfortunately, internal storage is limited to 16GB, and this figure becomes closer to 10 when you take into account the operating system. But a huge benefit is microSD card expandability, something the Redmi Note 2 can't boast. Whilst it's far from a stock experience, the early one actually offers a very complete software package. It's slick, polished, and feature-packed. To be honest, I think it's just as good as something from the likes of Samsung or LG. This has basically got everything you want it to. But having said that, it's got very little on top of that. Scrolling through the settings, you basically find everything you could want, but no real surprises. It's pretty dull. So the phone is actually based off Android 5.1, which is definitely a plus, although I couldn't see Android 6.0 coming in the near future. Let's have a listen to the speaker. Audio is fantastic, and the speakers are excellently placed, firing downwards rather than backwards so the sound is clear from almost all directions. The camera is a 13 megapixel affair, which you've heard a hundred times before, but when taking in a 16 to 9 ratio, this has to be lowered to 10 megapixels. And one thing I was really, really impressed by is actually the shutter speed. Most Chinese smartphones cannot keep up with this, and this shoots just as fast as any current flagship. Having said that, it does, as a result, sacrifice a little bit on detail. You have to hold the camera very, very still to avoid blur. Having said that, if you do find a solid surface to lean on, like a tripod or a table for example, then you can get quite a good level of clarity. While the photos aren't exactly the mind-blowing, colourful, vibrant, punchy photos that you see on phones like the LG G4, they're not too shabby. I would say it's pretty average for about $200 smartphone. And costing a little bit less than that, the LE One has a solid camera. The video, as you can see here, captured by the phone, is well above what I was expecting. Given again some stabilisation, you'll be surprised at what you can produce. What's kind of interesting is that the company have actually even managed to include optical image stabilisation into this budget-friendly package. So now, let's talk about performance. And while Antutu isn't exactly the be-all and end-all when it comes to this, it's a very good place to start the comparison. So we're scoring 48,000, which is actually for the price extremely good. It's almost exactly on par with the Redmi Note 2, which is unsurprising considering it has basically the same internals. We've got 3GB of RAM and the MediaTek Helio X10 processor, which are understandably high-end components, and they beat out almost every other smartphone for this price. Performance when playing games is also really good. Almost every 3D title runs fantastically, but there are exceptions. Games like Real Racing 3, although they don't run particularly badly, they're definitely not running at a smooth 60 frames per second. And the difference between this and a device running a Snapdragon 810 or an Exynos 7420 is certainly noticeable. When flicking through the UI and doing things like internet browsing and day-to-day -day tasks, you almost won't even notice a difference. It feels almost every bit as fast as my Galaxy Note 5. All of this is actually backed up by a 3000 mAh battery, which, to be honest, should have provided a little bit more juice than I ended up getting out of it. Battery life ends up being just about average. One day of usage is about what you'll get. So there we go guys, that is the LE TV, or however you actually say that name, LE One Smartphone. And to be honest guys, I went in with sky high expectations. On paper at least, this seemed like the perfect balance between powerful budget smartphones and the premium build quality of higher end handsets, and in almost all situations this ticked the boxes, and some. 
It's got the powerful performance of a flagship. It's built probably as good or better than almost any other phone I've ever used. The speaker is top notch and the camera is also pretty good. Throw in USB Type-C, 4G LTE, as well as microSD expandability, and this is a really, really tough phone to resist. The only thing I would say is that it does cost $30 more than the Redmi Note 2, which on paper is almost identical. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and this is Insanely Cool Tech.